supporting the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. And, and are you speaking for yourself or on behalf of I am speaking for myself. <laughs> I like that one. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate you taking me now. Uh, Madam Chair, I come before you as someone who spent 14 years here. Twelve of my years between the House and the Senate, I was in some form of a leadership role. And I can tell you during those years when I was in the House, the biggest complaint we ever had about someone carrying a gun was when we got a phone call and I had to come over and ask the chair of a committee to take it out of the front of their waistband and put it in the back. <laughs> and the reason that was done was because that committee had had so many threats that they felt much more comfortable having a weapon. Now, as a member of the Senate, I sat on the facilities committee and the idea that we should ban weapons kept coming up and everybody kept pointing to the policy that was posted on the wall in this building. And for six years I kept saying, show me where that policy was actually put up because it was a policy. And what we kept getting back from facilities was that it wasn't really a policy that had ever been voted on. It was something that someone stuck up there, an admin, and thought it was a good idea and that's the reason why, in all the 14 years I was here, we never enforced it. So, to say we're going back, or to say we just extended the existing policy, as I said, no one could ever find where the legislature or the facilities committee had ever actually authorized that piece of paper to go up onto the wall that banned weapons in the State House or in the OLB. Now, in all my years here, we did have a rule that said you shouldn't carry your gun on the floor of the House. And there was, in fact, some lock boxes, but I can tell you that nobody ever used them. And I'll tell you one of the most important reasons why people should be allowed to carry. We had a few staffers in this building were females who had consistent stalker problems. And the only thing that kept them safe was the fact that, or they believed kept them safe, was the fact that they had a weapon. In fact, one of the staffers had to use it, or had to brandish it a couple of times, to keep the person at bay. And that person keeps coming out and to this day still harasses her. Now, I don't know how she is affected or how she's handling the current ban. But it's unfair to her to have someone say, as an employee, walk three blocks all by yourself in the dark, and hopefully the person who's been bothering you for the eight or ten years that I'm aware of isn't out there. And I'll say that I also made a statement, as many of you know, I say what I think, and I don't really care sometimes what the public <laughs> thinks about that. I made a comment about a particular Senate president, uh, presidential candidate. And people from all over the country decided that they were going to come up and teach me a lesson, and I had more threats upon my life than I had anything else for probably three weeks. And I can tell you that the state health security staff, as well as the state troopers, all knew that I carried all encouraged me to carry because they read some of the, the emails. And I, I had no fear that anybody could take me or take advantage of the situation because I knew that I could protect myself. Had I been one of those people that were here now with all of those threats, it would have been fairly easy for the people who actually wanted to do me harm to actually come and do it. But unfortunately for them, the word was that I was armed and armed heavily, so anybody who decided that they might want to come might actually get hurt. And I don't want to say that they actually would have carried out their threats, but I do firmly believe that the fact that I carried, and openly carried, had an effect. And that's the effect I think you're taking away. I think you're taking away the people's ability to actually take care of themselves. What happens now when somebody decides Ah, let's just start threatening the legislators to do what we want them to do. There was a group out of Virginia when I was the Senate Majority Leader who came up and said the Senate would either vote a certain way on an employment bill or he would send some people up from Virginia to speak to me. I had no problem taking off my jacket, showing them that I had a sidearm, and said I had no problem with people coming to talk to me on any day. I don't care what state they're from. <laughs> It's one of the things and one of the realities that happens here. Anybody who is going to be, I want to say anybody who's going to not care what other people think and say what they honestly believe, runs into the situation where other people are going to think that they can be harassed. 
So I asked the committee to approve this bill. Is it perfect? There's no piece of legislation that has ever come out of this state house that's absolutely perfect. But this does the job. This allows people, except for what John Hunt has done, this allows people to go back to carry their weapons, to feel safe, and to do so in a manner that's not outright. And I will say one thing. I was in the gallery when HCR 6 was heard, and I stood in the middle of all those people with guns. And some of them had really big knives. And when the vote came out, it was an awful lot of angry people. And not one person reached for a gun, and not one person reached for a knife because we were watching. A lot of them made threats, but the threat was that those who voted the wrong way weren't going to get reelected if they had anything to say about it. And that was it. If they hadn't had any weapons on their legs, you wouldn't have had any concern. And I say to you that you shouldn't have had any concern anyways. Because most of them were upright citizens. I didn't meet anybody there that I was actually afraid of. And as I say, and I'll say again, not one put their hand anywhere near their weapon when they were angry over how that vote came out. Thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing me to testify. And I'll take any questions if there are any. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, would you believe, in, when I was a chairman, and, and I only had one time where I actually had Somebody was getting very agitated and very irritated, and in which we, someone in the committee had to call uh, the security to come up, and it turned out that the guy was a trial lawyer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deadly weapon. Makes you ban trial lawyers from having guns. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, folks, I am going to remind you all that we express our approval or disapproval silently.